Good. Can you hear me? I think so, yes. Um, uh, hello everyone, my name is uh, Alonso Pizarro. I am a postdoctoral researcher working at the University of Basilicata in Italy. So um, it's really my pleasure to be the first member of the working group for giving this first uh, webinar. I really hope this presentation is uh, of your interest, motivating further discussion and possible future collaborations. Um, well, let's start. This, uh, this webinar focuses on a personal project that uh, I named Feroce. Feroce, of course, is, a, is the acronym of a flat extreme uh, velocity estimations. Um, of course, with a focus in this way, and this uh, presentation on uh, seeding metrics to image velocity performances. So uh, what is Feroce project about? Feroce is uh, an acronym. So the first question, uh, is there a real meaning for this word? Yes, Feroce is the Italian word for uh, fierce, relentless, bold, or fearless in English. So the scope of uh, this project is uh, to monitor flat events in a fearless way, focusing on image velocimetry and remote sensing uh, using different uh, innovative techniques. So the first, the objective is uh, to define procedures, approaches, new frameworks to improve and uh, uh, the monitoring capacities at high uh, flows using these uh, innovative techniques. So um, I'm glad to tell you that the Feroce project is giving its uh, first results. The first paper you can see here uh, has been recently uh, published in Remote Sensing, MDPI, this week. So um, um, uh, th th this uh, paper treats important matters that uh, we will discuss uh, during this presentation as well. So I, I would like to uh, invite all of you to read this uh, second uh, manuscript as well that is currently in uh, open review in HES. So uh, please, any comment, suggestion is welcome. So uh, contact me. I'm more than happy to keep in touch with all of you. So as, as you likely notice, uh, this manuscript focus on the seeding characteristics to enhance image velocity results. So the question here is why seeding characteristics? Well, uh, Due to, due to two main reasons. First of all, fissures are essential for image velocimetry analysis. Without them, it's not possible to run the algorithms and therefore non-velocity calculation can be done. Secondly, these seeding characteristics that can be, for example, natural patterns flowing with the flow or artificial alterations launched for these purposes are time dependent uh, presenting changes on time. These dynamics uh, rely on, on case specific and environmental conditions. For instance, the current situation at, uh, for example, the Kelvin River in Glasgow is totally different than the one in the Vasento River in Potenza. So even at the same location, differences can be found at different times. So uh, these three uh, footage, footage are just an example of different seeding characteristics at field conditions. On the right side, it's uh, possible to appreciate artificial tracers highly aggregated, forming complex structure, stru structures. So um, also natural patterns um, are flowing with the flow. So uh, the river Brenta in the middle uh, presents shadows and different illumination condition at different intensities. The algorithms can potentially interpret these changes as features to track. Um, finally, uh, on the left side, the Arrow River shows artificial traces flowing with the flow and forming some aggregated structures. Um, these videos are part of the data set paper uh, recently accepted in the Earth System Science uh, Data Journal. So um, you have free access, and therefore I encourage you to download the data set and have some fun results. So um, a reference made at the end of this presentation for all of you that want to download the, this data set. Um, uh, coming back to the seeding uh, characteristics. So the right question is not why seeding characteristics, but what 
what are the important CD metrics for image velocimetry analysis. So for example, feature dimension is important. Shape, color, seeding density, dispersion, uh, aggregation of patterns, spatial variation of seeding dimension and shapes. Well, uh, this webinar focuses on these three seeding metrics, the seeding density, the spatial uh, seeding distribution characterizing dispersion or aggregation behaviors of uh, features on time, and spatial variation of seeding dimension and shape. So let's see if it's possible to explore these ideas uh, empirically using US footage. So three field case studies were acquired using the um, DGI Phantom 3 4 Pro in uh, southern Italy and uh, at uh, 24 frames per second. Um, be benchmark or reference velocities were also measured using a uh, carometer. On the right side of the slide, you can see the location of the field case studies and uh, an image of each of them. Interesting, wood chips and uh, charcoal were used as artificial tracers. Table one shows the main river characteristics at the acquisition time. Interesting to mention is the fact that this data is totally available. Please, um, you can use this uh, uh, reference in the blue square, the references in the blue square to be able to download everything. So not only the frames, but also videos, reference velocities and so on. So uh, I know this is a very important slide because it presents the quantification of the CD metrics that is carried out using uh, an ad hoc code written in MATLAB. So it gives the possibility to, to identify the tracers, their positions and their dimensions. Um, the figure shows only an example of the frame of the Basento River uh, where seeding characterization was performed within the region of interest, the red square there. So um, I know that probably many of you are thinking how this code works in detail. Um, I know it's a central piece within this research and therefore I would like to tell you that um, I support open science and I want to release the code in the near future. Actually, I'm, I'm currently working on a clean and stable uh, version of it and uh, probably I, I want to release it uh, in my next manuscript. Yes. Uh, well, uh, the seeding metrics can be quantified along the whole desired period of analysis. The figure on the right side of the slide shows the time dependent dynamics of the seeding metrics on time. So each color is related to one case study. For instance, the green represents the Basento River, the, white, the orange is uh, the Bradano case study, the blue one is, is not. So uh, this type of analysis gives you uh, a holistic representation of the seeding dynamics over the period of analysis. This could be of extreme importance because intuitively there could be, let's say, better portions of the footage to analyze with these image velocimetry techniques and algorithms. So um, on the right side, uh, you can see the first 20 frames of the case study that are presented for visual inspection. Colors uh, are related to the case study present, presented in the, in the legend. Um, um, also looking at the videos and the figure with the characterization of the cinematics, it's clear that the Basento case study is the most, most complex one due to its time dependent dynamics on all the metrics considered so far. You can see, for example, uh, pointer, yes. You can see, for example, here, you have these dynamics on the Vasento, using the Vasento River and all of these peaks and dynamics on time. This is uh, also reproduced, not only with the seeding density, that's uh, this um, inside, but uh, uh, also with the uh, spatial dispersion of uh, tracers and with the coefficient of variation of area. So um, intuitively, and visually, you can see this behavior also with the features here. So now we have 
already characterize the seeding properties during the footage length, it is possible to correlate somehow this property with image velocimetry results. So um, to this goal, PTV Lab and also PAV Lab software were used to compute absolute errors. Um, important to mention is the fact that no filtering procedure was uh, carried out and therefore the source of the error was of interest. Um, using multiple regression analysis with uh, the intention to identify the importance of each metric from the image velocimetry errors is possible to quantify the values of the coefficients C1, C2, and C3 of this uh, multiple regression analysis. Um, table two presents uh, these results along as, as uh, statistical information. So p-values were really low and in consequence, results are statistically significant. The, uh, yes, the R2 is about uh, 0.8 and uh, the figure on the right side should uh, observe versus compute uh, absolute errors. The dashed line represents the perfect agreement. So important to notice the, is the value of the multiple regression coefficients. For instance, C1 is negative, meaning a negative correlation between seeding density and absolute errors. This is somehow unexpectable. Increasing the seeding density implies decreasing image velocimetry errors. The, value, the values of C2 and C3 are more interesting in this regard. Remarkable, C3 is always higher than C2. And in consequence, um, the influence of the coefficient, coefficient of variation of area could be higher than the one of the spatial distribution of traces. Of course, uh, more analysis should be done to generalize this multiple uh, regression analysis. But for sure, it gives us an insight of the process. So now, how to proceed to optimize image velocimetry results and when I'm saying optimize, I'm talking about minimizing, of course, the errors. Well, uh, one way is the use of a numerical approach. Uh, this is uh, a really interesting way to explore a wider range of the variables in question. So um, following this idea, it's possible to establish a numerical framework to deal with image velocimetry performances. This framework focuses particularly on seeding densities and uh, spatial aggregation or dispersion of tracers. So in fact, uh, two objectives were imposed. First of all, uh, synthetic generation of specially aggregated tracers, more than 33,000 images uh, were generated. Secondly, a mathematical relationship linking seeding density, spatial distribution of tracer, and image velocimetry errors is of interest. This is essential to find the trends and therefore being able to minimize, to minimize the errors. The figure, the videos on the right side shows different aggregation patterns using the same seeding density. This is just an example um, to illustrate the capacity of the, framework, the numerical framework to uh, uh, generate the desired configurations. Of course, uh, you can see, for example, in this uh, uh, video that there is uh, more aggregation than in uh, uh, respect to the first one. So, um, synthetic traces were uh, randomly distributed in a space with uh, only one direction and uh, constant velocity. In this case, was, uh, were uh, 15 pixels per frame. Um, they consist uh, of uniform circular shapes with diameter of 10 pixels and uh, uh, a uniform white color. Both diameters and colors were altered with uh, white noise in order to consider more realistic configurations. That means that uh, uh, actually the mean diameter was 10 pixels, but you can find also diameters of 8 pixels and 12. And uh, the same situation is uh, happening with uh, the color. 
So um, there is spatial distribution that was controlled by a generalized, generalized uh, Poisson distribution with, in this case, a theoretical seeding density and uh, a level of aggregation. The quality of the result was determined by the magnitude of the errors that were computed in this way. So um, let's see some, some results. So uh, the, first of all, the range analyzed of seeding densities is um, huge, covering almost, let's say, all possible values at field conditions. Um, the, same, the same can be said on the aggregation levels. As you can appreciate, all the computed errors are negative, considering the full range of seeding metrics. So this means there is a systematic underestimation of the reference velocities. Um, results are uh, improved by increasing the seeding density and decreasing the level of aggregation. Interesting to, to, to notice is the fact that uh, PAV tends to be more affected by the aggregation levels than PTV. This can be uh, visually, this can be seen visually looking at the areas on the right side of the, of the figure. So um, um, in most of the cases, PTV outperforms PIB. Um, it's uh, um, not worth it to mention that the obtained results refer only uh, to this synthetic generation experiment. And uh, I know it's uh, somehow realistic, but are not representative of any field condition. So um, further investigation with, uh, of course, a larger um, data set of field circumstances should be carried out to generalize these uh, obtained results. So um, what about proposing a model for the errors? Actually, this is the goal of this slide. And um, using dimensional analysis, um, I propose that the errors follow an exponential law. And uh, they depend on the dimension, dimensionless parameter P in this case. P is introduced in my last manuscript that is currently uh, open for, for discussion. So um, after calibration of the model, uh, the root mean square errors and the, the Nash uh, coefficients uh, show really good values. That, that's uh, really good. You, you can see um, uh, on the right side of the, of the slide, it's possible to see that the global performance is of the model. So um, remarkable, it's observed a general trend. And that's uh, the important thing of this uh, um, model of the errors and the introduction of this uh, dimensionsless P parameter. The, minimis the minimization of P means a minimization of image velocity symmetry errors. This is of extreme importance since it's applicable at real case studies. So um, looking at the calibrated coefficients, K1 and uh, K2, it's possible to simplify P and use it in general practice at percent and the blue square. So let's, uh, let's uh, make a validation of all of this idea at real uh, field uh, conditions. So um, the ideas recently mentioned uh, and now explore taking a validation process using, using this uh, case study, the Basento case study. Um, this figure shows just an example of tracers identification using the MATLAB algorithm as um, it's possible to appreciate the code is able to correctly identify the traces, even though the shapes and dimensions are different. This is of extreme importance since it's the core for further analysis and the computation of seeding densities, uh, aggregation uh, levels of uh, tracers and so on. <coughs> so um, having identified the tracers, the code is able to compute the seeding density and spatial aggregation of levels. This um, is shown in the figure on the right side. Follow these ideas, it's possible to have a holistic insight of the seeding dynamics of a time. For instance, there's a reduction of aggregation levels between the uh, frames 100 
and uh, 150 approximately. Um, the computation of P is uh, then performed with the intention to minimize it. This is at least in the numerical case, the optimal condition that minimizes image velocity image errors. So in this case, and in, in this validation, two extreme cases uh, are considered for validation purposes. The one that minimizes P, that means the best portion of the video to use for uh, image velocity image analysis, and the one that maximizes, maximizes P, that means the worst portion of the video for image velocity image analysis. Then the computation of uh, image velocity errors are perform uh, on these two portions of the footage. Table two presents the results. So you can see that error results uh, were reduced by around 16% using the optimal portion of the video. Um, similar results were found using both PIB and PTB. And therefore, it seems that uh, the error reduction is um, independent of the technique. So um, as conclusion, uh, three metrics based on seeding density, spatial dis dispersion of uh, spatial dispersion index, and a spatial variance of traces areas, areas were adapted to characterize seeding properties. Statistical analysis of field case studies show that these metrics have a significant contribution to velocity estimation performances. Numerical simulations allow the introduction of P that can be calculated in practice as is presented in this slide. Uh, the P parameter allows the minimization of image velocity errors. So a pre-evaluation of seeing characteristics can allow the choice of the best portion of the footage to analyze in terms of image film simulator performances. Therefore, it's suggested, I suggested, a longer footage. In that way, you can decide and take just the best frames you have within the video. Now, uh, please uh, take a look at these uh, related publications. Um, if you are interested, interested, uh, interest, please uh, do not hesitate to contact me and uh, for any further information, discussion, collaboration. So uh, all of my uh, information is there. Uh, you can write me uh, an email or just uh, contact me using uh, social media, it's okay. So um, thank you very much for uh, your attention and uh, I'm happy to start with an open discussion if you, you agree. Excellent, fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Alonso. Um, really stimulating uh, talk there. Um, and so we've got plenty of time for, for questions and any discussion um, as people see fit. So would anybody like to uh, start us off uh, with our first question? Yeah, uh, hey everybody, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, so I'm Alex Oet. Uh, from France, actually working in Norway. Uh, I have actually a lot of questions, but I will start with a few of them. Uh, first, a very precise question. Alonso, you said that for the result, you didn't apply any filter on the computation. Do you mean also that you didn't apply any threshold on the correlation for the PIV and for the PTV? And associated to that question is that uh, I mean, I think that you should apply some filters on the correlation because, uh, especially for the PIV, uh, if you don't apply any tracer, then you may follow some spurious patterns that are not the one that you want to follow. So that's my first question. Do you, do you have any tracer on the correlation? No, actually no. It just the original setting for PIV, for example, um, in this analysis, we used uh, uh, FFT, uh, three passes, and uh, only that. 
I mean, just the setting of the, the needed information you have, you need to run the algorithm. Spurious results, of course, we have it because it's, it's impossible to, to, to deal with it. But uh, the good thing here is we were interested in the source of the errors with the intention to minimize them. So we uh, didn't want to filter them. Yeah, but I think there is a difference between filtering uh, errors and, for example, for PIV, if you allow very low correlation, then I think it's not really an error. It's just that the method needs to be filtering in correlation and you need to apply a minimum correlation threshold. That's part of the, of the state of the art of the method to say that, okay, I filter everything that have a correlation under maybe 0 0.6 or something like that. Yeah, that actually, that, that, that's true. For example, for PTV, we use it. But uh, for PAB, we just take the original uh, settings. Uh, so it, it, just, it was just the results. Uh, of course, in that way, we actually, we do have higher results, higher errors, of course. But uh, as I say, the objective of this work was to identify what were the sources of these errors uh, with intention to minimize them. Okay, may I continue with another remark and question? Uh, I think that during flood, we cannot add artificial seeding. And most of the time, the threshold that we have are natural, and it's mostly turbulence pattern. So it's not particles, uh, but it's more like continuous patterns that will evolve in time, uh, being stretched and deformed. So I have one question and maybe one remark. The question is, did you try to apply your code for the identification of the tracer on such continuous tracer like turbulence patterns? And the other thing is that uh, your numerical simulation that you show creates solid patterns, uh, which of course will be more adapted for PTV. That's why I'm not surprised that PTV give better results. But I'm sure that with natural patterns, uh, like turbulence patterns that can be, that can evolve in time, then PIV will be more adapted. So over that remark, maybe another question is, do you plan to create more realistic synthetic images uh, to, to test uh, the, the method? Yeah, yeah, actually that's a, a real good question and a comment and suggestion. We are planning uh, to generate more realistic uh, numerical simulations. Uh, this is a, um, a work we are currently working on. And uh, of course, with the intention to uh, better see the trends hidden in, in this process. So uh, the main idea was uh, this one, to generalize a, a little bit uh, this approach. Um, I'm really confident that the numerical approach and the numerical framework can give you a, a good insight of the process. So uh, we're now working on uh, generalizing. <laughs> yes. And uh, the, the, the code for the, the density of seeding, do you think it could be applied to the natural patterns like turbulence we can have in rivers? Yeah, uh, we did it actually. Uh, the algorithm, the code, is able to identify the patterns and uh, uh, yeah, but uh, that, that's actually a, a current work we are working on. So um, I'm, I'm not surprised at all, for example, for what you say about PTV and the numerical results with all of these uh, circle uh, uh, traces we generated uh, numerically. Uh, for that reason, I said in the presentation that of course, it's uh, good to have, um, to take these results with uh, a grain of salt. Uh, we are working on generalizing them. And uh, yeah, yeah, we're working on. Yeah, thank you very much. Very, very nice presentation, thanks. Uh, May I just reply with a quick comment to Alex? I have to thank you, first of all, for uh, 
the good questions, the stimulating comments uh, that you provided. Uh, in regarding the your uh, the monitoring of uh, flood events, uh, this is uh, clearly a challenge for all of us uh, as hydrologists. So, and uh, we we are uh, we aim to improve our ability to monitor uh, these events, uh, especially with the use of images, because uh, these are uh, safer than uh, traditional uh, uh, techniques. It is a challenge to simulate natural patterns, especially ripples. We're trying to do it in different ways. One way that we're trying is computer vision. And we are using graphical techniques to recreate such a pattern, but still, is a work that is a, uh, on process. The other thing that we're trying is uh, trying to generate uh, more natural uh, shaped uh, uh, particles. That is something that uh, is uh, easier to be done. But the ripples and turbulences are, uh, are a bit more uh, complex. Or we have to go for a numerical uh, modeling of the turbulences uh, in the flux, that is one option, or with uh, we can try with computer vision. This is something that is undergoing. But uh, the uh, what uh, we have done so far uh, with uh, Matthew and uh, with uh, the entire working group uh, was to collect all available experiments in uh, image velocimetry. Uh, in a repository that is, is now available for everyone. And in this repository, we have collected a range of experiments that collect a variety of uh, experiments under different conditions. And th that is also another option that we can use uh, for, uh, uh, for the next future. Yeah, I, I do agree. Thank you, Salvatore. I just want to add for your data set that we just recently have what we call the video challenge and some of the people here like Salvatore and Matthew were part of that. Um, and it was initiated by um, Mark Randall from Australia and he published a lot of different video of flood, um, not only in Australia but other things. And where we have also reference measurement using ADCPs or other kind of measurement to have like a, yeah, a controlled velocity. And that also, I mean, if we can, so I, I know I was part of the paper of Matt to, to uh, give some of my measurement, but I know that there are a lot more of, um, of data set and now a lot of people are making videos. And yeah, I think that we should put all the material we have on the same folder to have a huge database. Uh, and I would be happy to add also my cases. So if, if, if you can tell me where, I, I mean, if I can contribute and adding some videos, I would be very happy. I have a question. Alonso, um, did you play with the window size or the interrogation area? And uh, why do you think it's, uh, so that's one, and why in all, for all cases, uh, the velocity was underestimated? Do you have an explanation for that? Uh, that's a really good question. I don't have an explanation for the last question. Uh, everything was systemically, systemically underestimated. And, uh, but the good thing that was, for example, at the beginning of the of the range where the seating densities were really low, the errors were, of course, all of them were negative, but at this portion of the analysis, the errors were, let's say, minus 80%, just to, to give you a number like that. But increasing the seating density, you can, you could, you can find errors of the order of minus two or minus one. And uh, I mean, from our point of view, uh, we didn't want to, let's say, believe 100% to the number itself, but 
we were looking for the trend, how to minimize the errors. Um, yeah, and that, that's uh, the, the, my answer for you right now. And so, uh, respect to the, the first question, uh, yeah, we uh, did some analysis, uh, changed the uh, interrogation areas and search areas of the, of the, of the uh, uh, algorithms and so on. And uh, results were uh, similar. Of course, we couldn't test all the possible combinations so far. Okay, thanks. I just was wondering if it is um, something on the, because it's systematic, right? So I wonder if some configuration thing or probably related to what Alex mentioned, probably something on the um, finding the peak on you know, the cross correlation, probably there is something there, no? It's caught my attention. Anyway, thanks. Hi, everybody. Uh, Alonso, uh, it's uh, Mark Randall here from Australia. Uh, Alex was just mentioning about the, the video competition that we've, we've been running. Uh, yeah, certainly a really interesting um, presentation. I was just wondering. Um, that in Australia and, and a few other countries down here in the Southern Hemisphere, we're using STIV. And uh, I was just wondering whether that would be an option for that you should be looking at in comparison to the other techniques. Um, uh, so you, sorry. Oh. Yes, no, carry on. So I, I think STIV it's, uh, could be a good uh, alternative for uh, in, in terms of PTV or PIV. Uh, but also the other algorithms, for example, the KLT that uh, Matthew is, is uh, the author of it, and, and so on. Uh, we are open, of course, to test all of these technologies and advancements, codes, uh, with, under different configurations at field scales and uh, uh, also numerical scale. Um, yeah, but it's a possibility, yes. Uh, but uh, what we uh, so with this analysis using only PTV and PAV that the trend was uh, the same and we were looking at the trends, not at the uh, number itself. Yeah, just because the STIV does, isn't a cross correlation method, it's a, it's a different, it's a gradient tensor method. So just in our work down here, we, we have found that the LSPIV, we didn't have a lot of success with underrepresentation of, of the velocities, but with the STIV that um, Professor Vichira, which is our, uh, developed, we've had a lot better results with that. But um, in Australia here, we're actually, we, uh, the use of drones is now a standard measurement method for high flow events. And we're actually in the process here of, of publishing national industry guidelines for Australia uh, for collecting both drones and fixed camera measurements. Uh, they're gonna be published later this year. Um, so we are collecting uh, drone videos and um, yeah, we'd be happy to, um, or I'd be happy to supply um, those to, to you to help with the natural conditions that Alex mentioned. And I think it's, um, I think it's very important. R real floods are very different from simulated floods. Um, yeah. So I'd be happy to, to help in that respect. Yeah, for sure, the next step of uh, this research to apply all of these ideas and explore them at natural conditions. So it's, uh, it's much appreciated if uh, you can uh, give us access to all of this information. So in that way, we can apply uh, all of these ideas that, for example, I presented today. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Anyway, also following what Mark said and Alex, uh, this. Um, videos that uh, Mark collected, they are quite nice because they cover a very wide range of situations and now it has been processed with using a lot of different software. So I think it would be quite interesting to do something more. No? It was more just like going through Corona time, but uh, it's a very good uh, uh, test cases. No? I think uh, more things can be done with that, a lot more. Excellent. Yeah. It's Alex again, just to add some things that during the corona and inspired by Mark uh, initiative, we also conducted uh, a video challenge in France uh, with the hydrometric group in France. So we also have a lot of 
other videos that have been uh, with the reference, velocity and reference discharge that we can share. So I think the, we have a very rich database. Excellent, excellent. I, I think that's uh, what we need right now. So <laughs> we have a lot of uh, new ideas and uh, uh, the next step is to explore them at uh, real conditions. May I uh, just uh, give a final consideration? So, uh, the, I'm extremely happy to see that uh, the the community is uh, somehow uh, so large, and the, it, it uh, and we have been able to reach uh, most of the scientists interested on this specific topic. Uh, the cost action is. Uh, extremely motivated to test uh, algorithms and try to identify guidelines in uh, river monitoring. This is our uh, task. This is our uh, final aim. So in this, uh, we can try to uh, merge in initiative or eventually even support other initiatives in order to uh, uh, progress uh, in uh, uh, the definition of uh, standards and uh, procedures for uh, river monitoring. Uh, our aim was initially to uh, test different algorithms on different uh, uh, videos and uh, the fact that uh, there are already initiatives in, like this, uh, it may be an opportunity for us as uh, uh, cost action to, to use or sponsor this, uh, this initiative uh, in the way we can. And we can discuss about that uh, uh, maybe later on, but uh, we are uh, absolutely interested in uh, joining the forces uh, uh, in order to enhance our potential. Yeah, um, till Alex, uh, just want to say that Finally, what we, what we all try to do as a final goal, I think, is to compute the uncertainty of image-based methods. Uh, I mean, if we want to see what is the impact of the seeding and it's just to have an idea when we publish a discharge using image-based method of the uncertainty. And uncertainty of the pattern matching is one point. Uh, and I think that your work contributes a lot to that. Uh, we still need to have more work on that for more natural conditions. But then there, are, there is also the uncertainty of uh, auto-rectification when images are taken from the banks, for example, or of the stabilization of the images when the drone is moving and then going from surface velocity to depth average velocity and then going to depth average velocity to discharge. So I think we also need to, to think about the whole framework uh, here we, sp we, sp we are speaking about some contribution, but then we need to put all those contribution together in one framework. And just to mention that um, we just started a PhD in France. Uh, so the PhD student is Guillaume Baudard, and uh, uh, I'm uh, supervising the PhD with Jérôme Lecaune, that most of you know. And uh, one of the goals of the PhD is to apply a Bayesian framework of uncertainty that is already developed for the, uh, for the LSP IV uncertainty estimation. So uh, yeah, I think that we are all working on the same goal and we of course have to work together to, to be more efficient. Just following that, um, that point, Alex, um, as part of this uh, kind of webinar and hopefully it will turn into a series, we're hoping to present some of our ongoing work uh, related to some of those topics that you mentioned. Um, so, for example, the role of stabilization within the uh, ever budgets to link some of uh, these additional components that add to the uncertainty and trying to explore the different approaches and methods that can be used to do that. So hopefully we'll be in a position to present on that um, in the coming weeks and months. Um, in terms of the um, the data sets as well. I think it's fantastic that there's so much being um, acquired across a range of environmental conditions. Um, Alonso mentioned the data description paper, which is um, 
to be recently uh, published. Um, it is an there is an opportunity to, to, to um, add to that with data sets, so that it's on a kind of central um, repository if people would be interested. Uh, and that's something that we can perhaps explore with Mark's um, vast um, collection of video footage and, and Alex's as well. So perhaps that's something we could kind of continue to discuss um, a bit later. Okay, so we have uh, a few more minutes before uh, we have there any uh, final questions uh, for Alonso? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. it's Filippo speaking. Uh, thanks a lot to Alonso for the amazing presentation. It was a pleasure to see it. I have a question about the seeding material because you had the picture in which you showed two uh, different seeding. One was uh, cow coil and the other one was uh, wood chips. Uh, do you plan in future to work also on trying to estimate uh, the correlation between the error you have and the seeding material? Because in our experience, uh, uh, different materials give different results. For example, uh, uh, weight density of the material is an important property that determine uh, how how deep, uh, how much uh, submerge, how submerge is the seeding? Because the more submerge, the more difficult it is, but also the more submerge, the less affected by the wind. While the less uh, submerge, the easier to see, but uh, the more is affected by the wind. So I don't know in your experience, uh, if uh, what is the seeding material that uh, gave you the lowest errors? Thanks, uh, Filippo for uh, your question. Um, I have to be honest with you, we have uh, only uh, these uh, couple of uh, experiences with uh, different artificial tracers. Uh, we used uh, these uh, wood chips and uh, charcoal and uh, we used them actually because it was easy to find them and uh, we found actually that results were were okay in the range in the range of uh, good results. So um, of course it's a good way to go further uh, and to analyze what is the real influence of uh, these properties uh, on the image velocimetry results and performances. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, it, 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 it's logical what you said about the uh, submergency and uh, of course it's uh, easier, uh, for example, uh, if the traces are just on the top of the water, you can uh, identify them and probably track them very well. But of course they are uh, affected by wind condition, for example, as you already say. And uh, it's, you are adding another uh, variable to the analysis. Uh, Yes. But in your studies, you use a combination of wood chips and car coil, right? So you had both at the same time? Or, uh... Not at the same time. Okay. Actually, they were two different case studies. Yes. yes. Also, car coil is much darker than wood chips, I would expect. So that uh, the color of the seeding might also have an effect on the... Yeah, on but the you can, for example, with a pre-processing approach, and so you can enhance the uh, uh, the colors of the traces respect, with respect to the background. And so in that way, you can uh, easily identify them, yes. But for sure, the color, uh, seeding properties uh, in general are, are important. Were the, how were the rivers seeded? Because I could see very nice seeding uh, distribution. Were they seeded from... Uh, by multiple people uh, from different sites uh, and um, what case study in uh, in the you showed these uh, three nice uh, videos right uh, one was from two from Italy and one from uh, UK ah, okay okay the, the these case studies actually I think only one of them is uh, from us 
Yes. And the other ones are already available at the dataset paper, so you can go there and download them. And uh, for what respect to uh, our experience, uh, normally what we do is we select a location in the river. Okay, this location has uh, good properties. For example, uh, if we are interested in uh, stream flows, uh, there is a, 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 a station there. So you can have a, a value of the stream flow, but also we use current methods or ADCPs and uh, uh, other instruments to have more than uh, one measurement. But uh, normally uh, this location is uh, close to a bridge and uh, a couple of uh, people is on the bridge launching the tracers on the uh, water surface. Okay. Yes. Thanks a lot, Alonso. You're welcome. Okay, and with that, we're at 11 o'clock uh, in the UK, so um, we should probably close the webinar there. Uh, I'd just like to thank Alonso again for an excellent presentation. Uh, I know we're not easy to do uh, via Zoom and it was absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed hearing about your research and also the discussion uh, from the, the wider members of the community as well. So thanks everybody for joining us um, and please keep in touch and we'll hopefully be able to continue our discussions and uh, collaborations as we go. So thanks everybody again, and hopefully see you again soon. Thanks a lot for Thank everyone. Thank you. Bye. This is the webinar. Thank you. See you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.